Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Building a Nation with Team Canada and today we bring you what is essentially a victory lap I guess you could say it's a victory lap around North American qualifying We're gonna be trotting around BMO field today because we have already qualified for the World Cup in 2022 now it's just a matter of beating Mexico for pride, I suppose, just to prove that it can be done or prove that we can do it. We know it can be done because they've lost once in qualifying. They drew once in qualifying. And they drew twice in qualifying, actually, both times to Costa Rica. So those two teams kind of ate each other up. You know, this was supposed to be the group of death. Canada, Mexico, Costa Rica, Guatemala. That's a very tough group stage. And we came out of it with flying colors because of these two results. Because Costa Rica and Mexico drew twice, that really gave us the breathing room that we needed. Now this loss here to Guatemala, shocking as it was, that was just the icing on the cake right there. But yeah. That doesn't mean uh, we don't want to play. It doesn't mean we don't want to win this game. It just means... We don't have to. The pressure is off. So that's outstanding. Look at the rest of qualifying. Hopefully you saw Jamaica has gone forward. Canada, USA still has a little work to do today. So that's going to be probably the game of the day. The USA versus Haiti to see who qualifies from there. And then it's a matter of it will be Mexico versus haiti or usa like for that third spot trinidad tobago could possibly sneak in there as well with a win that, so that would be interesting so there's still you know three teams f four teams basically with a chance to go to the world cup playoffs and to see if they can get into the world cup proper but as for the rest of the groups yeah we'll see we shall see but it doesn't matter because we're going through. Uh, there is a couple of other things to talk about before we get to the game. Uh, a little more housekeeping. Check out this. Venuto is now a Canadian citizenship after living in the country for three years. So he's getting pretty close to being able to declare for Team Canada. He's 26 years old. He's still pretty good. He's fast. He's coming off an injury right now. But when he's in the game, he's a difference maker. Landon Donovan Award, uh, not a winner, but a nominee last year. Had an outstanding season. Uh, we can take a look at his, his information here, see how long he has to go. So 655 days, two years. Yeah, two years. And he'll be ready to play. So... He won't be able to play in this World Cup, unfortunately. The one we just qualified for. But next World Cup, possibly. He may have missed his... Yeah, he may have missed his World Cup. Possibly, now that I'm doing the math of it all. He may have missed his World Cup window by like a couple of months, unfortunately. But you know what? We can still use him in Gold Cups or whatever. You never know. Um, the other thing is... What am I looking for here? Under 20s have played some games. Uh, they've played two internationals, beat Trinidad, beat El Salvador. We got several of our players from Vancouver out there playing for the under 23s. Some interesting guys uh, as well that I've been keeping an eye on. Um, Cerbelli, really interesting kid, midfielder from TFC3. Got a lot of interesting abilities, 15 passing, namely among them. Uh, Anunye, here's an interesting kid. It appears like he is going through the MLS draft route. He's contracted to TFC3. He's 18 years old. But I've tried to pick him up. I've tried to like sign him, and they said you can't sign him until he's been drafted. So I believe this kid's going to go through MLS draft in one of these years. So i got to figure out which year that is and try to pick him up because he looks really good. I mean, his physicals are just sort of okay, but mentally he's off the charts for an 18-year-old. 
17 work rate, 17 teamwork, 20 aggression, 15 determination. This kid's out of control. Let's go along with 13 technique and 13 passing. Not bad. Several of our players, as I mentioned, are on the team. Ahmed is on the team. Hendricks is on the team. The 17-year-old striker playing pretty well. Lucic got called up. Uh, the right back, he's also looking pretty good. Lamayer. So lots and lots of our guys. Uh, we can take a look at the goals, I guess, just to just to see what we do. Let's see who else. Senior is there. Valente from our academy. Merriman Zanata, another one of our guys. So Smaljovic, a guy we've been keeping our eye on. So here's Edwards with the penalty kick. Gets us started against Trinidad Tobago. And here comes Smith down the left-hand side. Looks like he's uh, slowly outracing everybody. Then Pings went across Roberts Dixon. I'm not familiar with him. I have to take a look at him after the highlights are done. And then here's Roberts Dixon again with the free kick. He scored two goals. I guess it's worth looking at him. And then here's theirs off a of free kick. So a lot of free kick and penalty kick type of goals in this game. Kind of interesting. So where is this Roberts Dixon? Okay, we have him on some sort of list. Contracted to TFC3, 16 first touch, 16 teamwork, 15 long shots. Yeah, this is definitely another kid to keep an eye on. His potential might not be that high, but he's got some very interesting abilities. So, again, we just got to keep an eye on all these youngsters, and we got to keep improving them and moving their career on as best we can. But now, speaking of moving on. Let's get to our match preview today. No, not New York City versus Chicago. We're talking Canada versus Mexico. We appear to be the betting favorite. Six to four odds. Too early to tell, apparently. Mexico has won all four games against us. Tata Martino, still the head coach, although he is under, understandably, he is under fire these days because of this uh, lack of qualification. If he doesn't make it, to the World Cup, he's out. No question about that. He is gonzo. But anyway, it's another not particularly lovely day here. 41 degrees, wet and breezy, possible rain showers in BMO Field. 31,000 tickets sold, so the rain has kept some people away. It's not quite a sellout, but it's still going to be pretty good. Let's go. Team selection. So here we go. Different formation. How about that? A classic 4-4-2. I bet you'd never... In a million years would have guessed that I would go with a 4-4-2. I've never played a 4-4-2 before in my life. So there's no way Mexico is prepared for this. But I looked at their games and, you know, when they lost and when they drew, they were playing against this formation. So we're going to give it a shot. We're going to give it a try. Let's submit that team and get to the game. Let's go. All right, so Mexico, they're going with the formation that they have used, the 4-3-3. Guzman is in goal. Alvarez, Guzman also at right back. Carlos Guzman. Uh, Arroyo, Gutierrez, Herrera back with the team captain's armband. Hasn't played too well. Five appearances, only one assist. Lozano on the left-hand side, one goal, one assist. Lopez on the right. This is going to be his first appearance in the competition. And Jimenez up top. Three appearances off the bench. He's finally going to get a start today against Canada. And Mexico needs this game. They need a win to ensure that they at least have a chance to make it to the Olympics. And I'm sure that, um, I'm sure that they think they're going to win. They have no reason not to. I mean, they haven't played very well recently. But they have no reason to believe that, that we can beat them because we haven't come close yet. Well, in the early games, they only beat a sort of 1-0 kind of thing. But team selection has changed quite a bit. Um, yeah, whatever. Get out of here. A lot of green in the stands. This is sort of a 50-50 split here. What's up with that? Is this supposed to be like a neutral site game? Or there are just that many Mexican fans in Canada. I mean, it's it's not out of the question. 
Lopez with an early highlight. 17 seconds in, he gets a dangerous attempt. But yeah, the crowd is like 50-50. Mexico and Canada. Interesting. So our thought behind today's uh, double feature here of the 4-4-2, I mentioned it's the formation that they lost against playing the other teams. But also I figured, you know, with Cavallini and David up top, we can use sort of a defensive counterattacking kind of thing. Here's Cabra with a free kick. Sends one in. Ooh, Guzman with a nice save. We're also set up to sort of look for set pieces as well. Um, but the idea is basically to try to counterattack and then use that speed of David to catch him. Because we've caught him before in some of our early games we played against Mexico when we had David up top as a striker. Since then, we've been putting him at wing, but we've got a lot of wing players. So might as well try David up top and see if he can uh, use that speed to his advantage. Mark Anthony K tries to curl one in there. Guzman has a little trouble with that one. It's sort of a sneaky, a sneaky one. Interestingly, we are holding possession, 56% of possession. So we are trying to slow things down and just sort of keep this game real ugly. Here's Lozano. Nana wins the header off the wall to Jaguar. And this is what we want. We want this counterattack, but it Cavallini holds it up for some reason. And he gets dispossessed. All right. So it's been a eventful first 20 minutes. Lots of shots, lots of free kicks. Lozano just off the post. Borgian with the great stop. Hmm. Mexico, they're... They're challenging here. They're starting to take back possession. They're starting to take control of this game. 53%. Seven shots. Oh, here's Davies now with a corner. So, again, the set pieces. Set pieces are not working too good for us. I don't think we really have a lot of our great set piece takers in the game, honestly, or even on the, the squad in general. There we go. That's what we want to see. Jaguar downfield to David. David on the run. Ooh. So you can see. That's the plan. Bomb it to David and see if he can work some magic. I don't think we're... We're not set to necessarily, like, totally bomb it. Um, you know, just standard direct passing currently. So it's fine. We're just trying to, I don't know, we're just trying stuff, honestly. <laughs> trying to figure it out. What's going on? What's going on here? Uh, we want to get to the field? Pause? Play? What's happening? Ah, button. Okay. Sometimes you miss something that's right in front of your nose. That's what I did there. Okay. Canada. Let's go. 50% possession is okay. Coming up to the 30-minute mark. Not sure what's going on here. Henry's got a yellow card. He's not playing particularly well. Here's Mexico with the first true highlight. Sends one across the field to Guzman. Herrera. Oof, Borgian. Sort of made that uh, look harder than it was. Here we go. Lopez. Corner kick. Near side sends it in. Borgian gathers it in. That's more like it. Goes up in a crowd and pulls it down calmly and easily. Here's another free kick. Baloo sends one in. We're just... Henry with the header. We're just sort of trading set pieces currently. Both teams with seven fouls apiece. It's a very even game right now. They've got the more shots, but other than that, it's pretty even. A lot of highlights, too. 38 minutes. Baloo wins a header, knocks it on. Can't, can't chase it down. And Mexico is going to start. So we're not counter-pressing. We're dropping back. Reforming our shape. There's a bit of a wide uh, stretch there for Lozano to go through. But Baloo tracks back. Good, good man. 
I like it when the wingers play that defense. It's another reason why I've got Baloo in there is because he's a bit more of a well-rounded player than David. So if we let David play up top as a striker, he doesn't have to think about all this stuff like playing defense and, and whatnot. Borgen with another easy save. So this, I don't know, the 4-4-2 just seems to be stifling Mexico. They really have had a problem with it in this tournament. You know, this 4-3-3 of theirs just doesn't work too good. Now, if they just give the ball to Lozano and let him slice through the defense, I think he can score a goal anytime he wants. But it's just a matter of will they do that? Will they give him the freedom to do it? Zoroyo so tries to bend one in. They're, they're also shooting the ball from like 40 yards out every time. So we'll take that for sure. <clears throat> okay, dressing room. I don't think there's necessarily any tactical change I want to make. I kind of want to take Henry out. You know, there's lots of guys not particularly playing well. He's got that yellow card. Playing next to Jagir. Um, we could throw Dunn in there. He's exceptional. He's match fit. He's got, you know, the most health of anybody on the bench. But I don't know. We'll see if Henry can, you know, we'll tell him to ease off tackles once we get to half. And then we'll see if he can make it to the 60-minute mark. Until that, you know, other than that, you know, I just, because he's our, he's our most veteran guy. So please, how things are going, keep it up. He's our most veteran guy, and uh, we need him in there. Just, we need him to not, you know, get fouled out, which would be horrific. Lozano closed down on. Should play a short passing play, huh? No, not going to do that. Okay, back to the field. They Mexico's made their first change. Pizarro comes on for Jimenez. Let's see, Pizarro. How are we looking here? Thirteen million dollar man. Yeah, he's pretty good. Pretty good. He would be our starting striker for sure. Gutierrez, there's Lozano. Getting free and scoring. That's what I told you. You just get him the ball and let him do his thing, they would probably score. Here he goes, Gutierrez. You know, after we just told our guys to close down on him and mark him tightly and press him and all that stuff, he still just gets free. And scores. Okay. So, Mexico's done what they wanted to do. Sixty-minute point. Point. We'll make our sub. Bring in Dunn for Henry. And let's see. Balu is playing terrible out on the left-hand side. So we could could bring in either Hoylet or well, pretty much Hoylet is all we got. Or we could move Davies over there. Bring in somebody else. Um, nah, we'll just bring in Hoylet, I think. Or Balu. I mean, I guess we could also bring in Petrasso. Yeah, let's give Petrasso a run out there. See what he can do. You know, we called him up. We might as well use him. He's a guy who doesn't have many caps, so we might as well get him in there. Get him used to playing against the likes of Mexico. 66 minutes. You gotta assume that they're just gonna play back. You know, are we just gonna let them get out of here with a 1 0 victory? Is that what we're looking at? Or are we gonna do something about it? It's a question.
Tactics. Um, do we want to switch tactics? Do we want to switch tactics? Uh, let's see. Do we have the the team available for this? Uh, we don't really have an attacking center mid, honestly. But you know what? David had attacking mid. Sure. Why not? We'll replace him in a minute. You know. Could have been patient, I suppose. Could have waited. Sat back in the 4-4-2 and just waited for our opportunity. But that's that's not really the kind of coach I am. That's not really what I do. Something goes wrong, I make a change. Not really, not always, but in this case, I feel compelled. Here we go. Cabra with a throw in. Headed away. Jesus has it. Now here's Mexico on the counterattack. This is where they flourish. Piet, though, the destroyer comes in. Jaguer lazily goes after that ball. There we go. Done. Does his job. Have to show Jaguer how to do it. Petrasso, the substitute, the little guy. He gets it stolen. <laughs> and the highlight continues. It's a mega highlight. Back and forth we go. Jesus. Jesus C. J, good old JC. See if he can work a miracle here. Gutierrez. They're passing it around. Herrera. Yeah, we cover him this time. Are they going to get another long shot off? They do. Look at Jesus cutting around the defense, but Borgian is there. Great stop. Great stop, my man. There's something about this formation. Mexico really likes playing against this formation. So maybe we got to rethink its inclusion. That was, other than the goal, that was their best attack all game. So our third and final sub... Cabra's playing terribly. You know, we could move Alfonso Davies down to left back and sort of, you know, be funny about it. But no, I don't think so. I think we'll bring in Hundel for David. Just to bring somebody who's a little bit more uh, familiar with that position. The attacking center mid. Cavallini gets a yellow card. 78 minutes. Come on, boys. Let's give him a shout and say... Get creative. Here we go. Nana has it. Mark Anthony K. Moving it downfield. Petrasso again. They're giving him lots of space. But he has proved to not be particularly dangerous. He sends the cross in. There's Cavallini. Yeah. That's all you got to do. You just got to bad mouth players. No. Cavallini offside. Oh, Petrasso just a fraction of a second late with that cross. Wow. Ouch, that hurts. That hurts a lot. 85 minutes. See if Mexico can get away with one. Davies. Sends in the header. Jaguer is fouled in the box. Who's going to take the penalty? Lucas Cavallini. Confirm. You're going to take the penalty. You got denied the last goal. Here we go. Even it up. Let's take a step forward and get a draw against Mexico. Yes. Yes. Can't deny him that goal. Cavallini ties it up. Bango. I mean, uh, goalkeeper made a valiant effort. Guzman is no slouch, that's for sure. 35 years old, 16 one-on-ones, 18 eccentricity. It's more likely he stops that than not, honestly. He's just outstanding when it comes to those kind of plays. But we got one past him. 
Four minutes of stoppage time. Mexico playing it close to the vest here. Guzman trying to bring it out. Nearly gets tackled there. Is that Balu harassing him? Cabra. Okay. Not a great play. Tried to send that one back to the keeper. He's going to give Mexico a corner out of that one. Here we go. Jesus with the corner. Dunn heads it out of there. That's a couple of really nice defensive plays from Dunn in this second half. Jesus, there's Dunn again. They can't get past him. He's become a wall. Two minutes of stoppage time. One minute to go. Here's Mexico with perhaps their final highlight. Final chance to get the victory they need to move on to World Cup qualifying. The ball is stolen by Davies. He's on the run. Mexican defense centers it. Hundo. Hundo shoots it wide. No. My dude. My dude. You had the game in, in your hands. On your foot. Done again. 15 seconds to go. Mark Anthony K fouled. Gonna get a. I mean, that's it. That's it. We should have scored there. Hundle, how could you? How could you miss? He was so good at international play, but I don't know what it is. He's fallen off a cliff lately. He just his production isn't there like it was earlier. Wow, that was good and bad and disappointing and. Not disappointing. It's just a lot of emotions right now. We got the draw, which is a step forward. <laughs> you know, we we're, we didn't lose three nil, like usual. Um, but yeah, we should have, could have, would have had the victory. That would have been an amazing goal. <sighs> All right, uh, who got the player of the match there? Anybody? Anybody? Bueller, player of the match. Now is it hidden under one of these? No. So it must have been must have been somebody from Mexico that got it. Alright, pep talk. Um everybody thought we'd get beaten. Good job. Way to go. Alright. So yeah. Step up, step forward in the right direction, and honestly it doesn't matter because we qualified for the World Cup. But let's see. USA beats Haiti. 3-2, to two, so USA is going to the World Cup. Honduras beat Curaçao. Canada, Mexico, Costa Rica, and Guatemala. Drew, there's a lot of draws in this group of death. It's just the group of draws, not the group of death. Uh, let's take a look at the competition as a whole. So Mexico does, with that draw, they squeak into the World Cup playoffs boy i pity who whoever is going to be playing against mexico in that unless it's somebody like maybe italy somebody like that from uh you know a european team could be bad news but if they run into somebody like you know australia or china or south korea or something like that they should probably get through to the world cup but mexico slides into the world cup playoff and going on is USA, Canada, and Jamaica. That's probably not what anybody would have guessed if you asked them before the World Cup. Soccer Federation are delighted that the team qualified from the third round. They're confident you will meet their expectations in the upcoming World Cup. World Cup, November 21st, 2022, 608 days. So as you saw, Venuto has like 655 days to go. So he's gonna miss he's gonna miss going to the World Cup by a couple of months. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. But we've strengthened the squad in other ways and other areas, so it should be fine. Canada must build on the World Cup qualifying performance. Players such as Cabra, Cavallini, Alfonso Davies. Yes, 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 yes. Canada, happy with your performance. I should hope so. I should really hope so. So there we go. Step two of our journey is in place. Step one, 
was going to the Olympics. Now step two, going to the 2022 World Cup. And step three will be going to the 2026 World Cup. So let's, uh, let's get out of here for now. We'll come back, I don't know when, and I don't know for what. Probably more North American Champions League with Vancouver. So until then, until next time, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.